It's the 1st of September and football is back. It may have come back too soon for Randall, but for others it's been too long to wait. Some big matchups today, especially in the NFC Central. And in the AFC East, Miami says to Buffalo, no snow, will throw. For the silver and black, old faces in new places. Hey you, listen up. I said, hey you, listen up. Even you, listen up. NFL primetime is next. everybody, I'm Chris Berman, and welcome to week one of NFL uh, primetime. We've got so much going on, we can't wait to get started. Tom Jackson, Robin Roberts, a lot of late games. Why don't we get right to the scores and tell you what's going on in the late games around the NFL. The Vikings and the Chicago Bears, and the Bears doing what they always do, winning their opener at home. Eight in a row for them now. They beat the Vikings by a count of 10-6. We'll have highlights of that for you a little bit later on. The Cardinals and the Rams, Phoenix Cardinals, they haven't lost a game in the preseason or the regular season now. Tom Tupa starts, but they win at the Rams 24-14. to The Houston Oilers in the House of Pain, and they are rolling the Raiders. That's a 40-17 to score in the fourth quarter. Dumas with a fumble recovery, the latest uh, touchdown for the Oilers in that game. Denver Broncos and John Elway, he's calling his own plays. Right, Tommy should have done it for years. 45-14 to 14 the final as the Broncos win big. The New England Patriots have gone to where they won last year. They're 1-0. The Pats have beaten the Colts in the Hoosier Dome 16-7. Steelers and the San Diego Chargers. The Steelers have just scored again. That's now a 26-13 lead for the Steelers. They play the final few minutes at Three Rivers Stadium. The Buffalo Bills and Miami Dolphins, this is a wild one. The Dolphins have just scored to bring it within four. So the Bills and Dolphins lighting it up as they did in the playoffs last year. 35-31, the Bills with a four-point lead and the ball. Twice in this game, Jim Kelly was hurt. Once, he didn't miss any plays. Another time, he had to leave uh, for about two plays, but Kelly has gone back in there and has quarterback the Bills for much of the day. Not as fortunate today for the Eagles, Randall Cunningham who on the first play of the second quarter in the Eagles' win at Green Bay, was injured. He hurt his left knee. Two ligaments appear to be torn. They'll have a test on either tonight and another one on Monday to determine the full extent of the problem. But Randall says, they let me come out of the pocket, I'd have a better shot at not getting hurt. And there he is going off, and that is, if you're a Philadelphia Eagle... Tommy, that is a tough, tough sight. Not only because he's your starting quarterback, but because he's Randall Cunningham and what uh, he does. Now, the Eagles, to their credit, uh, did win the game on the road. But still, what's going through your head if you're an Eagle? Well, I think certainly not only do you lose the yardage and all of the, the physical things that he does on the field, you lose the emotion of maybe the most exciting ball player in the league. This points up the reason that every club, you have to have two good quarterbacks if you plan to be in that playoff hunt. Well, I'll tell you what, the Eagles now, we'll, we'll talk more about them. We'll show you their highlights in a while. Uh, Jim McMahon uh, will be the uh, quarterback. Let's uh, start with the early games and show you what happened there. A game that looked to be a whole hummer on the schedule. The Seattle Seahawks in another dome on the road at New Orleans against the New Orleans Saints. But you know what? It turned out to be the most exciting game of all the early ones. Shows you why they don't play these things on paper. They do it for real on the field. Jim Mora with the decision. It's Bobby Hebert. A year's worth of sitting out over Steve Walsh. Early on, Hebert connects with Keenan Finnerty. It's a 50-yard touchdown. Eugene Robinson is dissed right there. It's a touchdown, and New Orleans leads it 7-0. Then some Saints defense. You know about their linebackers. Vaughn Johnson out. Pat Swilling not only knocks it loose, he picks up the football and he goes to the end of what appears to be a touchdown, but Tommy, they called it back. Well, Chris, what a great play by Pat Swilling. He strips the ball, he goes, he recovers it, he runs it for a touchdown, but there was an inadvertent whistle that made that play, that negated that play. But in the second quarter, you got more of Pat Swilling. Here he comes for the interception. Lob a little too long. 
runs it in for a touchdown, gets this one to count. Yeah, well, I mean, that's pretty good. One out of two. He could have had 14 points today, all by his low as 12 points. Saints lead at 17 0. Brian Blades, he gets nailed by the Saints here. They come out of the football, and the Saints lead it 20 to 7 at the half. Dave Craig says, Brian, you're a heck of a player. You hang in there. He did, and they did. Craig, third quarter. The dart. Craig can look bad. He also can look sharp. Blades caught 12 passes for 160 yards today, a pair of touchdowns, and Seattle's coming back. And it's Seattle's defense turn to turn the tie on Bobby Bear. Off the hands of Quinn Early, into the hands of Brian Davis, and he could go. Oh, the way. It's 24 to 20. The Seahawks grab the lead. The Saints need a wake-up call. And Ricky Jackson knocks Craig from the game. You see Ricky Jackson holding, contain, keeping the pressure, and then he stays into the play. Good hustle downfield. Cracked Dave Craig. He ended up breaking his thumb on the play. Broken right thumb. He had good numbers. He's out eight weeks. So the Saints trying him out of comeback. Fourth and goal with just over a minute to go. It's a touchdown. Hebert to Floyd Turner. So the Saints now have the 27-24 lead. But it wasn't over just because Craig was out of the game. A veteran backup, Jeff Kemp, leads him down the field. He goes long to Lewis Clark. Vinci Buck is called for the pass interference. Now, Kemp looking for Clark again for Chuck Knox to try and get the win. Remember, they're down three. But twice, some close calls. The Seahawks bench thought he was rolled out, and they should get a pass interference call. They protested. They tack on a 15-yard penalty. So instead of a 22-yarder, it's a 37-yard field goal attempt for the rookie John Casey, and it's no good. They cut Norm Johnson. Casey was great in the preseason, but the rookie fails on a 37-yard attempt. Chuck is thinking about... Uh, you know what that is. That's Tom Benson in dancing. There he goes. The Saints have won. They went at 27 to 24, and the Seahawks thought that we was robbed, but they dug themselves a big, big hole. Now, Tommy, uh, first of all, David Craig, we told you that he broke his thumb, and Craig, oddly enough, only he and Tim Rosenbaugh took every snap last year from scrimmage. Rosenbaugh's gone for the year for the Cardinals in the preseason. Craig is now gone for half the year. It's unbelievable. Jeff Kemp will play. Dan McGuire, the youngster, will be the backup as Craig is gone for at least eight weeks. Now, Tommy, let's talk uh, about the Saints here. Now, Jim Moore is going to be happy. Bear looked okay, certainly in the first half. He's happy because he won, but I don't think this was Jim Moore type of football. Well, every coach has a specific game plan, a, a winning formula, if you will. Moore's formula is... Play mistake-proof offense. Let the defense keep you close. If necessary, win the game. I don't think he'll be happy with the way they won because the offense gave up too many points. They won't be able to do that and win consistently this year. All right, but the Saints, at least a uh, playoff team from last year, get off on the right foot and uh, they get the win. And Seattle came mightily back, but were beaten late. Coming up next, we'll show you more about Randall Cunningham and the Philadelphia Eagles' plight in Green Bay. But first, New Orleans and Seattle, we said this on game day, they were the only the teams with the worst record on opening day. You figure they'd play to a tie, they almost did. The Saints won, but they still have the worst record overall. But they'll take win number six out of 25 shots. When we come back, not only the Eagles game, but we'll show you the hard-hitting Falcons in and out of bounds against the Chiefs. We'll be back. NFL Primetime is brought to you by Dollar Rent-A-Car, right on the money, right on the airport, and by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you, friends know when to say when. So a tough day, as we told you, for some starting quarterbacks around the league. You know, with the new in-the-grasp rule, meaning that a quarterback is allowed to escape unless he's in danger, you figure that the Eagles-Packers game Pitting Randall Cunningham and Don Mikowski against each other would be wild and wooly. But such a duel never really materialized, and the rule didn't come into play very often. The magic man, his rotator cuff problems seem to be all right, but Reggie White causing other problems. In the backfield, nails Keith Woodside for loss, and he worked against Tony Mandarich today. Tom. Reggie White, perennial all-pro here, working against Mandarich, gives a great inside spin. 
gets him down for his first sack of the day. Randall Cunningham making his 62nd straight start. But early on, the Packers defense, and the person on number five, 95, Bryce Pop, he beats the rookie, Antone Davis, and wraps up Cunningham. Dan Mikowski rolling out. Reggie bats it. Mikowski bats it up in the air, and Mike Golick comes down with it. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Down to the 29, sets up a Roger Ruzak field goal. Rich Kotite is coaching the deal. Leads it 3 nothing. Dan, first play, second quarter. Here it is. Again. Bryce Pop pops Cunningham's knee. Randall knows it's bad. And a test on Monday will show how bad exactly, but they fear the worst. Expected to miss the entire season. So Jim McMahon with his tinted window came in. And watch this, doink, Chuck Cecil, no, and Pete fires a touchdown. Boy, Jim McMahon, just like he diagrammed it, Tom. Ball takes some strange bounces sometimes. Here, the second effort by Cecil actually causes the catch by Byers, and just the way McMahon planted as he comes and celebrates in the end. Oh, yeah, 90-yard bomb looked great. 10-0 Eagles in the second quarter. McMahon trying to drive him again, but Scott Steven makes the pick and returns it out of danger up to the 35-yard line. The crowd at Lambeau Field. It wasn't frozen tundra, but they rejoiced, and then a hockey game broke out. And in the break is Paul and McKenna to keep Jackson was thrown out of the game. So Randall gone, Jackson gone, but Reggie White was not gone. No in the grasp here, and Mikowski takes a shot on his right shoulder, picks up the first down, and the Packers were all psyched because he was fine and he looked good. But Mikowski, doink off Perry Kemp's face. Clarence Weathers, gotta catch that, son. Then it's Mikowski. Holds onto the ball a little too long, and guess who's coming? Reggie White. Number 92. Makes the sack, causes the fumble. Clyde the Glide Simmons falls on it. Magic only 6 of 21 in the first half. 13-0 Eagles in the third quarter. The Packers, Packers offense needs a wake-up call. And plan B signee by Sikahema, one-time pro bowler with the Cardinals. He tries to go all the way with Jeff Philadelphia Eagles punch. He almost does. It's down to the three. So the Packers, they control within six. But on first down, tackle eligible? No. Ron Halster may complete. Second and goal, Mikowski to Jackie Harris. No. It's third and goal. Mikowski back to pass. Jerome Brown swats it down. They get only a Jackie field goal. Big victory there for the Eagles. It's only 13-3. McMahon a little rusty, as you might expect. Overthrows Fred Barnett. But if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. McMahon. This time he hits the streaking Barnett. 76 high stepping yards. It's 20 to 3 Philadelphia. McMahon's numbers good. He was aided with that bounce pass. Then he came on. Reggie White, his numbers were better. Yeah, he gets the three for here, Chris. He gets the sack on Mikowski going to get around Mandich, causes the fumble, and then somehow, and I don't know exactly how, he manages to dig this ball out and make the recovery. Mikowski, not the magical day that he and Packer fans had envisioned. As the Eagles, despite losing Randall and Jackson for the game, but Randall's more serious, the Eagles win. Rich Kotite's era is 1-0. Eagles win at 20-3. After the game, and obviously disconsolate Randall Cunningham said they wanted me to stay in the pocket. That was the problem. I developed this, this style of running the ball all the time, and whenever guys come in, I get out of the pocket. And then, uh, you know, you get criticized. Cunningham's not a Montana. He scrambles too much, this, that. And then sometimes it gets on your conscience, and you try to be somebody that you're not. And um, when I come back, I'll be myself. I'm not going to try to be something that everybody wants me to be. Well, let's hope that he does come back this year. It doesn't look good, but it's not official yet. They have an MRI test scheduled uh, for tomorrow, and they'll get to that right away. Tommy, Jim McMahon. Uh, is he the answer for 15 games and maybe the playoffs if that's what the Eagles are looking at? Well, Chris, I thought he played well today. You know, after spending a lot of time off the field the last two years, you come in, you're a little bit rusty. I could see his progress even as the game went on. I think but the reason he isn't a Chicago Bear is because he has had an affinity for injury in the past. And I think they acquired him to come in and spot Randall Cunningham. They did not acquire him to play 16 you know, football games during the season. So I don't know what's going to happen from this point on, but they might need another quarterback somewhere along the line. Well, the guy behind McMahon right now is a rookie from Baylor, Brad Clark, or House of the Seven, Gable. <laughs> he passed only 14 times last year for Baylor before injuring his hand. Behind him, Keith Byers is the emergency quarterback. So 
We'll follow that in the waiver wires and what the Eagles do this week. The Atlanta Falcons uh, picked up a quarterback this week, but not to start, at least not just yet. Chris Miller is their starter. They got Tolliver. But the Falcons have lost 18 straight road games. Jerry Glanville says this has got to stop. Problem was, they had a tall and tough task going up against the Chiefs in Arrowhead. The Chiefs with some definite designs on the Super Bowl. Jerry Glanville can always pose for the picture with bike bikers from Yale. Well, at any rate, you know Atlanta came out hitting Elbert Shelley on the safety blitz. Mike Gann tries to put Steve DeBerg gone. What? The Nigerian nightmare is laid out by Ken Tippins. What's wrong with this play, Tom? You're, you've got Kimmel Anders with the ball. He's clearly out of bounds here. And you say, see Neon Dion come, give him a cheap shot to the face, cost him a penalty. It got the flag. Chiefs offense, not a very good first half. James Saxon, oh, it's a fumble! Bobby Butler, number 23, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Could he go all the way? Well, not much, but he does get it out near the midfield strike. The Chiefs trail the Falcons 3-0 at the half to the chagrin of Marty Schottenheimer. Falcons offense under Chris Miller never really did take flight. Miller going to pass, feels the pressure. And then watch the strip right here by Chris Martin. Deron Cherry falls on it, and the Chiefs are in business. Last year in offseason for the Nigerian nightmare. He was tough today, vowing again to regain the form that got him the AFC rushing crown a couple of years ago. The nightmare to the five. And Christian Okoye into the end zone. It's seven, three Chiefs after three. In the fourth quarter, you keep with what got you there. Look at him rumble. Look at the speed. Scott Case finally tries to derail him and does. But Akoya, 22 carries, a buck 43 today. Marty Schottenheimer watching the Chiefs running game finally get into business. Barry Ward activated today, a couple of short runs. Then the bird to Emil Debbie Harry for the touchdown. The Chiefs lead it 14 to 3. Tommy, we said Miller had a bad day. Albert Lewis was responsible. He was responsible all day. Here you see him covering. He makes a great read on a short throw, something that's most difficult for a cornerback. Then you see Miller go back, look to his, who is, to his left, come back to his right, throw into quadruple coverage. Not a very good idea. Lewis makes his second pick of the day. Gets a nice return. And then just great athleticism here as he reaches over Mike Pritchard for the jump ball and comes down with interception number three. He once had three interceptions back in 85. He could probably do it again four other games this year. He's one of the very best. Chris Miller, it could be very good, but today was not one of his best days, that's for sure. Then again, the Chiefs are renowned for their defensive backs. And Kansas City won at 14-3, but we talked about Jim Mora maybe not being happy with the type of ball his Saints played in winning. Neither was Marty Schottenheimer. But like I told our players at the half, I said the only mistake we made was that we thought preseason went through four games and a half. But we finally got it going at the start of the second half, and uh, we played our kind of football, and that's the way we need to play uh, as the season unfolds. So the Chiefs get off on the winning side, and Atlanta, well, they're getting used to this. 19 straight losses on the road. Oddly enough, the record set by the Boilers of 81 to 84, they broke that streak of 23 in Kansas City. When Buffalo came close at 22 and 83 to 86, they broke that streak at Kansas City. Atlanta couldn't break their streak in Kansas City, and so now they'll have to try and break it somewhere else. The Falcons are four off the dubious NFL mark. We'll update all the late scores when we come back. we got some great games late, the Dolphins and the Bills, the Bears and the Vikings. But as we go inside the numbers, Randall Cunningham, his departure, what does that mean? Well, look at the percentage of yards last year and the percentage of touchdowns should read the second column. You can see that he had more to do with the Eagles' yards and touchdowns than the other guys did, Marino and Montana. The Dallas Cowboys, can they win on the road this year? Are they a playoff team? We'll show you in a moment. Welcome back to NFL Primetime. We'd like to welcome all those of you that have just watched the Buffalo Bills hold off the Miami Dolphins at a final now from Rich Stadium, 35-31. The Bills win it in a wild one. I'd also like to welcome those of you that watched the Steelers beat the San Diego Chargers, 26-20. The Chargers 1-8 at Three Rivers Stadium throughout their history. 
And one game still going on. You knew this would be the longest one. The Raiders and the Oilers. Four and a half minutes to go. The Oilers all over the silver and black. 40 to 17. Let's go back uh, to the early games. And Rob and Roberts kept their eye on the... Well, you, you did keep your eye on the, on the Cleveland Browns and the sure. Dallas Cowboys. New era for the Browns. Dallas, though, they may have something. Yeah, they're really coming. Jimmy Johnson has gotten this team good in a hurry. But we'll talk about the Browns first. They gave up a league-high 462 points last season. Now, maybe that's part of the reason they got Bill Belichick, the former defensive coordinator for the Giants. He's now the new man in Cleveland. And the Browns' defense would be tested quickly with the Cowboys' Troy Aikman and Emmitt Smith. And would they spoil Belichick's debut? His Browns down 3-0 in the first quarter. Bernie Kosar looking for Brian Brennan. Kenneth Gant gets caught pushing and shoving. Interference is the call. It's first and goal, Browns at the five. Three plays later, Kevin Mack around the left side, and he just makes it in the corner of the end zone, then gets into a skirmish with the Cowboys' Derek Brownlow, who momentarily grabs his face mask. The Big Mac attack Enzo, and it's 7-3 Browns in the first quarter. Jimmy Johnson a little bit concerned, and he had no reason to be because his quarterback put on an air show today. The ball belonged to Troy Aikman. He was red hot in the first half, finding Michael Irvin for a 17-yard gain over the middle. Then Jay Novacek with a tremendous catch for a 19-yard gain. And then it's Irvin again on the sideline for a gain of 12. Aikman completed 10 of his first 12 passes, TJ. He has matured so quickly as a quarterback. Here you see him glance to his right, come off of a receiver, come back to his left, step up in the pocket. He has a great arm. He has great courage. Cowboys drive to the Cleveland 2. Aikman, look at that tremendous play fake. Finds Novacek for the score. It's 13-7. Dallas in the lead. Then just before the half, Aikman just, he just flings it under pressure to Irvin, who makes the catch. 27 Cowboys at the half. Aikman 24 of 37 for 274 yards, and he wasn't intercepted once. Two touchdown tosses. Belichick not the only new face in Cleveland. 20 new new faces, including former Giant Joe Morris, rookie James Jones, Ernie Logan, just picked off of waivers this week, but it was the old faces that brought Cleveland back. First play of the second half, Bernie Kozar. For Webster Slaughter, he is Yes, he's wide open. The play goes for 62 yards. Browns are back within six. It's a 20 to 14 ball game. For the Cowboys, they just had too much. Emmett Smith, a big day. 32 carries for 112 yards, tying the Cowboys record for most carries in a game. And then without uh, five players in the Browns secondary, like uh, rookie Eric Turner, 15 year vet, Raven Claiborne, who injured his right ankle today. The Cowboys' passing attack was just too much as well. Second half looked like the first. Aikman to Novacek, another fine catch. Then again to Michael Irvin. Irvin with nine catches for 123 yards. Pretty good day for the team of Aikman to Irvin. Cowboys win by a final of 26 to 14. And so the Cowboys improved their NFL best record in openers to 24-7-1. The Browns were held to under 300 yards for, uh, for a total offense. The seventh straight regular season game, the Cowboys' defense has done that. Let's check in on the Bucks and the Jets at the Meadowlands. As Bruce Costlett trying to make the right moves and Blair Thomas, you know what? He made them all day long. Thomas didn't have any real long runs but he didn't make the most of his chances when he was carrying the football and Thomas didn't hesitate to fight for first yard, for first down yardage TJ. Well, every great running back has great vision and I think that Blair Thomas, the key to his game is the ability to see the cutback lane to see back across the football field. Thomas, 23 carries, 92 yards, and he also caught one for 16 yards. Trailing 10-6 after the first half, new defensive coordinator Floyd Peters instructs his troops. And then Keith McCants, I think he likes his new position. He comes through second Jets quarterback Ken O'Brien. Former skin, former car, Dexter Manley didn't do too much. He didn't see much playing time. Fourth quarter, bucks down 13-6. Vinny Testaverde, his rookie Lawrence Dossey. It goes for 65 yards, 13 all, with 5.57 left to go, TJ. Play begins with good pass protection by the offensive line. Chester Birdie gives a nice pump fake to move the safety, and Dossie has absolutely burned Tony Stargo for the touchdown. And the Jets come back. Pat Leahy earlier hit a 30-yard field goal to become the sixth all-time scorer in NFL history. He nails one from 40 yards out. Jets take a 16-13 lead. Buccaneers have one last chance, but Reggie Cobb, drops the kickoff. Eric McMillan knocks it as Cobb tries to get it back. Dale Dawkins recovers for the Jets, and the Jets celebrate the 16-13 victory. Ken O'Brien completed 16 of 25 passes 
for 176 yards. Blair Thomas, 92 yards on 23 carries. Meanwhile, Vinny Testaverde completed 12 of 28 for 197 yards. And Chris, the pressure's on Vinny a little bit. Testaverde made some really bold comments in the preseason, thinking that this is his year with a new coach in mind. Well, he's calling his own play, no huddle right. and those things. That's why they play all 16 games. <laughs> he, uh, they have trouble when they go up north, even early in the year. And then one other note on Pat Leahy. He is the last of the Mohicans. Not only is he the oldest player in the NFL right now at 40 years of age, his 18th season, but he is the last Shea Stadium Jet. Ten years a Jet at Shea Stadium, only eight in the Meadowlands. When he goes, the last link of the Jets to Shea Stadium. Not the last who ever played there, but he's played more at Shea than he has at the Meadowlands. Thought we should throw that in. Natural turf, where it should be played. When we come back, Natural turf at Soldier Field, and we'll show you what happened to the Vikings playing on natural turf. They hate this stuff at the Bears. All that and more coming up. Ah, it's time to have the late highlights trickle in here on NFL Primetime, and we want to get them to you right away. The Vikings and the Bears. Boy, they didn't take long uh, to get things uh, going as far as an important game on the NFC Central schedule was. What, did they? It's a front-loaded schedule. Nothing bigger in that division than the Vikings at the Bears. So here we go from Soldier Field in Chicago, where the Vikings unveil their new one-back offense, featuring Herschel. First drive of the game. Herschel up the middle for six yards. Then, number 34, right up the cut for 15 yards. It looks great. But the Vikes run into trouble in the red zone. First and goal at the two. Look at Mike Singletary steam in and catch Herschel for the loss. Second and goal. Herschel stuffed again. Trace Armstrong and company. Vikings had to settle for a quadra Bay's field goal. Jerry Burns has the lead, but he should have had seven. Jim Harbaugh to James Thornton. Down at the one, they decide to review it. They say that the ground helped make the catch, and so it's negated. So, on fourth down, the Butler did not do it. Kevin Butler misses wide left. Kind of a tough day for field goal kickers. It's 3 nothing Vikes. Harry Newsom's punt. Audrey McMillan downs it. And so the Bears, on a great play, start to drive it there, too. Peter Tom Willis helps sending in the plays. Harbaugh to Neil Anderson. Reggie Rutland with the big hit, but Anderson gets the tough first down. Next play, Harbaugh to the shotgun. To Tom Waddle. He dives, and Waddle's into the end zone. It's a 7-3 Bears lead at the half. What a great catch. Fourth career catch in his third NFL season, but it's a big touchdown. So a 7-3 Bears lead at the half. First drive in the second half of the Vikings, Tommy. Well, you know, the Vikings had a problem last year getting the ball into the end zone once they got into the red zone. There you see Herschel Walker stop. There you see him stuffed again on second down. As we get to third down, Wade Wilson with a play fake goes back to pass, can't find anybody, ends up getting sacked. And again, the Vikings have to settle for a field goal. You've got to convert that close. Fourth quarter Bears defense. Mike Singletary. Well, it's not Singletary. He helped signal it, but Donnell Wolford makes the INT. What happens on the play? Wade Wilson seen Richard Dent in his face before. Goes around Herschel. He hurries the throw. And the Bears, they miss a field goal by Butler, but they call roughing the kicker, so he gets to kick a shorter one again. It was good. And instead of a 7-6 win, it's a 10-6 win for the Chicago Bears, who've now won eight in a row. Home openers, that's the second longest streak ever in the NFL. Obviously, the longest current one. Cards at the Rams. Pick it up with Fritz Shermer as the uh, Ram coordinator last year. Now he is the Cards defensive coordinator for Joe Bugle. Jim Everett fumbles a snap. And look what happens. The Cards, who had the stingiest defense in the preseason, Eric Hill recovers and goes 85 yards for a touchdown off an Everett fumble. It's 7-0 Phoenix. Rams get the ball back, but Cleveland Gary is hit and fumbles. Ken Harvey recovers. New attitude in Phoenix under Joe Bugle. Cardinals capitalize. Who says they need Tim Rosenbaum? Tom Tupa is honey. He hits Ernie Jones in the end zone. It's 28 yards, 14-0 Phoenix. Now 14-7. Where's Camarillo the punt? Bernard Turner. Bumbell. Camarillo, of all people, recovers. Rams turnover number three. Jim Everett. 
Mike Dordich rips it off. Aeneas Williams picks it off. Rams turnover number four. With the score 21-7, Everett to Pat Carter. Carter's going to fumble. Lorenzo Lynch recovers. Goes out of bounds. That's the fifth turnover. Could it get worse? On the Camarillo punt, Vernon Turner mishandles it. Steve Height recovers the sixth turnover. 24 to 14 cards, closing minute. Tim McDonald had the ball. E-I-E-I-O, he picks off Everett Rams, turnover number seven. John Robinson says, hey, Fred, you shouldn't be doing that to your old coach here. As the Cardinals beat the Rams 24 to 14, remember, that the Cardinals, along with the 49ers, the only undefeated teams in the preseason over the last 11 years, eight out of the 14 teams that went undefeated in the preseason ended up making the playoffs. Let's go back to the Bears uh, and the Vikings, Tommy, because Minnesota, you were up there this week. You saw them in training camp, too, figured they had a new attitude. Bears still play some pretty good D. And if you can't score a touchdown, you're not going to win. Well, yeah, and not only did they play good D, you know, they didn't break the scoreboard offensively, but I think what was most impressive today was Jim Harbaugh's patience as a quarterback. He was stepping up into the pocket. He didn't have the nervous feet that you see from quarterbacks sometimes. If they get a passing attack to go with a Neil Anderson-led running game, you know, they might win more than 10 games this year. And you know what? The Vikings, the last time they won a natural grass was November 12th, 1989. That's ridiculous. They've lost 19 of their last 23 outdoors. This is a team that used to play outside of Metropolitan Stadium. When we return, we've got highlights of some wild late games still to come. The Dolphins can't read the defense in Buffalo, and they pay for it. In the Astrodome, the Oilers giving the Raiders the business big time. And the Patriots, the MAC attack in Indy. Once upon a time, the Miami Dolphins owned the Buffalo Bills no matter where they played. And always it was a schedule that saw the Dolphins come from Florida into Buffalo in September or October. Last year, it was different. They had to go up there in December and play a big game. They had to go back and play a playoff game in January. Dolphins were tough, but lost each by 10. This time, though, they said, we get to try it in our kind of weather. Week one in Buffalo. And let's see what happened. The Bills try to write the first chapter of a Super Bowl season, but Jim Kelly banged up all day, limping during the first series. Bills scored on their first possession eight times last year, but Scott Norwood, just like he missed a field goal in the Super Bowl, the field goal to the right, misses his first field goal to the right, and the crowd booed a little bit. Bruce Smith was out, but Sammy Smith was out for Miami. Mark Higgs, of all people, the diminutive one, raced for 147 yards today. Flea flicker. Dan Marino to Mark Clayton from Louisville. It's a 43-yard touchdown, and it's 7-0 Dolphins. Next series, Kelly doesn't see Lewis Oliver. He's picked off, and Oliver returns at 35 yards. Kelly makes the tackle, but Marv Levy is furious. But then Jim finds his touch. It's his favorite target, Andre Reed. Makes the little turn on Oliver. And he's going to read his way into the end zone right there. 54 yards, 14-7, though. Miami leads it at the half. Early third, T.J. Turner with the hit, Tom. Yeah, and Jim Kelly, it didn't look like he really took a, a bump on that ankle. Looked like he just got it stuck in that turf a little bit. But Frank Wright came in. The beat goes on. Wright beat Miami last December. A touchdown to put shake, rattle, and roll. His last nine receptions are all touchdowns. Kelly on the bench fighting off the pain. He returns. He saw Reich do it, and he goes to Thermal Thomas. Didn't need to be Thermal on this day. He was scorching. 50 yards, 21-17 Buffalo. Kelly not too gimpy now. 381 yards passing. 28-24 Bills. Big play. Third and one, Mark Higgs is popped. Mark Kelt so finally falls and picks up the football. like the four corners in basketball he's running down the clock himself and that helped thermal thomas 165 yards rushing 108 yards receiving two touchdowns he ruins everybody doesn't he he's ruined the dolphins again the bills had to play tough again against the very gay miami dolphins team but buffalo who didn't lose at home at all last year now 26 and 2 over the last three-plus seasons in Rich Stadium, they win it 38-35. to 35. 
How did Eric Dickerson fare against the New England Patriots? You figure if he's going to look good, he might as well look good against the Pats. But we'll tell you how Thermal fared against the Dolphins the same way he always does. Last six wins against Miami, Thurman has been a one-man wrecking crew. There are a lot of great backs. He's at the top of the list. We'll be back. The New England Patriots became the laughing stock of pro football last year, but guess what? They laugh pretty well in Indianapolis, that, don't they? That's Robert? right. That was last year. You know, forget you know about all the problems they had last year, they and that's well, just the one or two on and off the field. So you know they wanted to get off to a good start in '91, and they had to feel pretty good about their chances because they were starting their season in Indianapolis. They've only won two of their last 20 games, but both of those victories coming over the Colts. And would that string continue? Dick McPherson making his debut, looking to pump up his team. First quarter, Jeff George, he buys himself some time. Tries to pass to Anthony Johnson, but Andre Tippett, he acts like it's his first career interception, Tommy. Robin, it is his first career interception. It's hard to believe that a guy who's played that great for as long as Andre has actually got his first pick today. And he did. That set up first and 10 for the 23. Tommy Hodgson hits tight end Marv Cook. A 23-yard scoring play. It's 7-0 Pats, and Coach McPherson is pumped. Still in the first, Jeff George. Buys himself some more time scrambling. Finds Bill Brooks. 24-yard touchdown pass. 7-all. 10-7 pass in the lead at the half. Second half will be a tale of two kickers. Jason Swarovski and Dean Biasucci. And the third, 10-7 pass. Swarovski hits from 39 yards. It's 13-7 pass. After a cold drive, Dean Biasucci. And that's what you need, a college coach like that, pumping up the NFL. Dean Biasucci is blocked by Brent Williams. The Pats were tough on defense. Jeff George, back to pass. Garen Barris with the sack. <laughs> Coach Mack pumped as the Pats win 16-7, just like he did it at Syracuse. And the final 16-7, New England picking up their victory, the first of the year, needless to say. The Chargers opened on the road for the fifth straight year, having dropped their last four. They took on the Steelers. Everybody wondering about Dan Henning's offense, what it do with John Freeze. Freeze had a variety of problems. Here on all pro quarterback Rod Woodson breaks up a pass and he overthrows Ronnie Harmon. This one got batted down by the Steelers' defensive line. Second quarter tied at three, Bubby Brisker, who started slowly, finds a wide open Chris Calloway for a 33 yard touchdown score. 10 3 Steelers at the half. Brisker came out strong in the second half. Here hitting Barry Foster for 32 yards. And then he lets Gary Anderson do the rest. couple of field goals like that, three field goals, and then the Chargers. That is Rod Bernstein, who throws in the end zone to Nate Lewis. Lewis makes a leading, leaping grab to make it 19-10 Steelers. Next series, Bobby Brisker gets sandwiched between Leslie O'Neill and George Hinkle. Brister had to lead the game, as you might imagine. Steelers up 19-13. Brister's replacement, Neil O'Donnell. He faced a third and 19 on his own 11. Chuck Noll, yeah, a little anxious. O'Donnell drops back, hits Dwight Stone on the near sideline. Stone races. He does it all himself. 89 yards. He doesn't need any help for the touchdown. O'Donnell, that's right, Neil O'Donnell, helped the Steelers get victory number one of 1991. Steelers win it by a final of 26 to 20. The tale of the quarterbacks going on. At least the Steelers didn't have to wait until four games in to get their first offensive touchdown this yeah, year. Uh, that's right. You know, Neil O'Donnell really, by numbers alone, totally played Bubby in the preseason, but, but Bubby was the starter. Uh, now we'll see what Chuck Knoll decides. All right, Robin, thank you. When we return, the Raiders and the Oilers, and we've got to show you the Broncos at home against the Bengals. But first, 100-yard rushers today. How many times have we seen his name top the list? Thermal Thomas, the nightmare. Emmett Smith, looking fine for the Cowboys. There were more in week one. Mark Higgs, despite the loss, 146 yards. Gaston Green for Denver ran it up in place of Bobby Humphrey. Alan Pinkett, lost in the shuffle of all those running backs once upon a time, coming to the forefront. We'll show you how. Had a feeling the Oilers and Raiders would be the longest game of the day, but Houston certainly didn't mind. It was like days of old, the house of pain. The Raiders have always been good starters, at least on opening day, but not under the dome. It was the house of pain inflicted on the Raiders. R.D., Warren, Moon, 
and the offense. Third and four, Moon always has the reliable Drew Hill. Converts the third down. First half, eight of 10 on third down for the Oilers. Moon throws the prettiest pass in the league. Here he hits Hayward Jeffries. 10 yard catch, first down. And for speed and hands, it's Ernest Givens from Louisville. It's a 22 yard touchdown. A little celebration. Love you, Blue. Those are the starters off the bench. Moon has guys like Leonard Harris who shake and bait for 29 yards. Still deeper, Moon has Tony Jones. They could get guys out of the parking lot and Moon could find him at 28 yards a touchdown. Warren, 18 of 33 for 250. And on the ground, Warren Moon had that vaunted running back Warren Moon. A touchdown from the one. Oh, by the way, Lorenzo White holding out. Alan Pickett, Notre Dame, filling in admirably. Yeah, I'd say so. 144 yards and almost 50 on the first drive for Jack Pardee. First half, tough to score when you don't have the ball. That was the Raiders' problem. When they did have the ball, Ray Childress and company sacked Jay Schrader. Schrader feeling pressure. Bubba McDowell picks off Schrader who's going back to the old form, at least on this day, when he moves, he's in trouble. Sam Grady, he's fast when he holds the ball. When he fumbles it, Eric Fares, Mike Dumars picks it up for the touchdown, an 18-yard return, and the Oilers all over. Art Shell and the Raiders, 47-17. If you tack on last year's AFC title game, 51-3, 98 to 20 the Raiders have been outscored the last two games but let's go to the Oilers run and shoot I mean everybody caught the pass everybody ran the football the Oilers when they're clicking look very strong well I think Moon's got that run and shoot thing figured yeah. out you know and he not only throws the short game well he throws the long ball well we always comment when we're watching what a beautiful ball he throws and I know the Raiders can't wait to play somebody with a conventional offense well <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure and the Oilers uh, well this year, they'd like to do something they've never done before, and that's win the AFC Central. And now the pass rush to go along with that great uh, passing attack. 300-yard passers. Warren Moon didn't quite get there himself, but a guy who riddled the Raiders in the title game last year, Jim Kelly, certainly did. Boy George, oh boy, for 301 yards, but it was in a losing cause. We'll be back with the Broncos. Bobby Bonilla getting ready for the Pittsburgh Pirates. They hope to get in the postseason in baseball, maybe win it all. Pirates at the Padres at the top of the hour, Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. But Sunday night primetime, and it always is a primetime possibility when John Elway steps up against Boomer Esiason and the Broncos meet the Bengals. They did it at Mile High Stadium, and boy, did they have a shootout at the OK Corral, at least for the Denver fans' point of view they did. Dan Reeves says, John Elway, it's your call, John. You make the call. Elway to Michael Young. 52 yards out of the gate, 7-0 Broncos. Uh, good call, John. Sam Weiss still calls his own plays. And that means a wrinkle or five. The flea flicker. Boomer to Mike Farmer. 7-7 after the first. Early second quarter. Elway says... Uh, let me try something different. Uh, let's see what's nothing up my sleeve. Reeves says, uh, John, I wonder what you're going to call. No way, hands to Steve Sewell. No, you're not calling your own number, are you, John? Yes, he is. Sewell to Elway, 24 yards. A couple of plays later, Elway calls his own number on the ground. I kind of like this thing of calling my own plays. It's 14-7 Denver. Gaston Green started today for Bobby Humphrey, who's sitting at home in Alabama. Green. All he does is juke for 43 yards. Down to the Bengal 37-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. A couple of plays later, Gaston Green. Didn't really do it as a Ram. Did it today as a Bronco down to the one. Greg Lewis scored a touchdown at 21-7. That rocks. Gaston's number on the day, 28-7 Denver at the half. Early third quarter, Tommy Boomer. Boomer Esiason with his patented play fake and a 52-yard touchdown as a result of Tim McGee. The Bengals driving late in the third and this the key moment of the game. Picked off by Tyrone Braxton. He's rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. It's a touchdown. The Bengals thought they could creep closer, but instead it's 35-14. to 14. Receiver didn't turn around. Boomer picked three times. 
fourth quarter. Icing for Elway. He slides, he's safe. Getting ready for baseball in Denver. Elway shows him how to slide. 262 yards passing, pair of touchdowns running. The Broncos win impressively 45 to 14. And Tommy, like days of old for number seven a little bit, huh? Well, I think one of the things that Dan Reeves wanted to do by letting him call his own plays was to give him some uh, enthusiasm for the game. I think that John may have been feeling a little bored with the way things were. And you could tell how excited he was today about playing football. Broncos had problems putting up points in the preseason, none putting them up in the first regular season. Yeah, but if you can't get excited when you win by 31 points, when are you going to get <laughs> going to get excited. Some receivers were excited today. We have a list of 100-yard receivers in week one. And that starts with, in a losing cause, 12 catches for buck 60 by pro bowler Brian Blaine of the Seattle Seahawks. Andre Reid, his usual brilliant self, and Clayton hooked up. He and Clayton hooked up for a great duel in that game in Buffalo. Michael Irvin, boy, the Cowboys have some great young players at the skill positions, don't they? Henry Ellard in a loss. Byers in a win. Delpino in a loss. We'll be back with a final word or two in a moment.